Welcome again our video friends. We appreciate all of you who have joined with us to, uh, for this session. A uh, beautiful Sunday morning in the month of March. I mean a beautiful day, blue skies and good uh, temperatures. And we're so thankful for this day that the Lord hath made. And we rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> and we do appreciate you joining with us. And I certainly hope you'll pray for me and for these videos that the Lord will use them uh, to his glory and to his honor. Well, we are now in John chapter 3, down in verse 22. After these things came Jesus and his disciples to the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. Now, you don't hear a lot about Jesus baptized, but he did. He baptized people. <clears throat> We're told right here that he baptized. In this um, section of scripture right here, we read about Jesus baptizing. Uh, and it's odd. I, I, I've heard, I've I don't remember if I've ever heard a teacher or a preacher speak about Jesus baptizing. But we're told right here, he did. They tarried there with him and baptized. And uh, he certainly did that. He baptized uh, the converts. No doubt to that, he did. We know that John baptized. And uh, here, and we also know that John baptized Jesus. Uh, but right here, we read that Jesus baptized people. We're told that. And... Uh, so he did. Now, I don't think those people are any more saved than you and I because we were not baptized physically by Jesus. I have been baptized by a Baptist preacher, and uh, so is my wife, so is all my children, I think. Uh, but whether it was the Baptist or the Methodist <coughs> or the Presbyterian, uh, baptism doesn't save us. Our faith in Jesus Christ is what saves us. And we're just as saved as these people that the Lord put his hands on and baptized in person. But he did that. Verse 23, And John also was baptizing, also, and Enon near to Salem, to Salem uh, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. And so it was. John continued his ministry for a while he, alongside uh, of Jesus Christ as he began his ministry. Uh, the two lives were almost parallel together as far as their birth and the time of their ministry. Uh, it was very, very close together uh, as far as the calendar goes. And we read here, for John was not yet cast into prison. We know that was coming on John. Verse 25, And there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. Now, you know that the Jews were big on purifying things. Um, they had great rituals they went through about washing their hands uh, for some of their feasts and some of their meals and how they would dry their hands. And, uh, and the priest had uh, great uh, uh, procedures that they went through according to the law about washing themselves, preparing themselves before they would touch the offering and take the offering and make the offering. Uh, so the, the, these, uh, uh, these Jews were very, very keen about purifying and uh, being purified. And they came unto John and said to him, Rabbi, uh, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Well, they is wondering about this. Said, can two of you baptize? Can two people baptize? And... Uh, and John's got an answer for them right here. This is John the Baptist that we're talking about, not John the Beloved. And, uh, and, uh, and so it is. I mean, these guys right here, it's like they never got it right, did they? They just never got it uh, straightened out, these Jews uh, who rejected. And here they come about the question about purifying. They said, wait a minute, uh, what's this for? Obviously, they associated the baptism with purifying, which was not what it was. And, uh, but they had this all mixed up here. And verse 27, let's read John's answer. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. And that's so true. That's so very true what he had to say right there. He was sent before him. And he... And then he goes on to say in verse 29, He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth 
and heareth him rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom's voice and my voice and my joy therefore is fulfilled and I'll, we'll, we'll come to verse 30 in just a minute but right here john makes a statement gives them an illustration john the baptist does he says you have heard me say that i am not the one i am not the christ but that i am sent before him he sets it straight with them another time uh, they had gotten confused when they said Jesus is baptizing and John's baptizing. Uh, they just they just didn't have it right, did they? And uh, John sets it right. He, he ignores some of their foolishness and he answers them uh, to the point. And he said, "I am not the Christ." He said, "He said, but I rejoice from what I'm hearing about him is just the same as a as uh, as the bride." as the friend of the bridegroom would stand and rejoice with him. He said, that's my position. It would be just like that. And John's telling him, I'm very happy to hear that much people are being baptized by the Lord. That means that much people have received him and believed upon his holy name. And so uh, uh, he says, I'm happy about this, as if for a good friend of mine uh, that, uh, uh, that, that he is. And he said that he went on to say in the next verse right uh, in, the, in verse 30 right here uh, he said he must increase but I must decrease and so it was as time went on this verse 30 was greatly fulfilled Jesus Christ's ministry increased and became great John the Baptist's ministry ceased and he was beheaded as we know from the scriptures and so so john had it so right so true and so it is and now you know that baptism in our day <clears throat> we we true believers practice believers baptism not infant baptism you don't find infant baptism anywhere in the bible but you find believers baptism I always remember that and i know some of you folks you may have taken your children and had them baptized uh by some priest or some elder well, that's not gonna that's not gonna save that child. That child must come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and uh, that type of baptism is not found in the Scripture. What is found in the Scripture is believers' baptism, believers' baptism, whether they be children or whether they be eighty years old. That's what we find in in the New Testament, and right here uh, we find right here again. This was believer's baptism, not children's baptism. And uh, the Catholic Church came up with the ideal of children's baptism. And it was a big uh, point of controversy uh, many years ago between true believers of the Bible and, uh, and uh, those of other religious persuasions uh, and who baptized children and as if though they have then become Christians. Well, no, they haven't. And... Uh, it's fine for children to be baptized if they know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Uh, all of my children, we had six children, and all of mine received Christ at an early age. Between five, six, seven years old, they all received the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and they were all baptized. Children, yes, they were children. Uh, I felt that they understood full well God's plan for salvation. I felt they understood uh, what baptism was and what it wasn't and so I was glad to see them fall in in, uh, in uh, believers baptism and I had the joy of baptizing one of my children I've had the joy of baptizing uh, I believe it's two other people not many uh, so uh, but a few people I've had the joy of baptizing and I carried a great joy each time uh, but uh, none of that saved any of those people whether those I baptized uh, that baptism did not save them. And so it is with John's baptism. So it is with the baptism that Jesus baptized with. Uh, that act in itself did not save those people. Faith in God saved those people. Faith in his Christ saved their souls from a devil's hell. And they had uh, come. They had heard the word that John preached. And they had followed into baptism uh, that he preached them. And it's the same then as it is now is a testimony that they had died <clears throat> to the old life and had believed and uh, were buried with Christ in baptism. And now they're risen again to a new life in Jesus Christ. 
That's what baptism is all about. It is a sign. It is a testimony. And it's, it's for the believer. And it's, it's, an answer, it's an answer of a clear conscience, we're told in the Bible, uh, between the believer and God. When we do that, it is, it is a public testimony. It's the answer of a clear conscience. Uh, when you do that and you make it known publicly that you trusted in God, uh, it's the answer of a clear conscience before God. I hope you can see the, uh, uh, the meaning of baptism. And it's, it's something that we remember, that we have followed the Lord in. And it shouldn't be done lightly or taken lightly. It's very serious. And uh, But don't get the idea you've been baptized, therefore you're saved. That's not true. Uh, you can be baptized to, you know, the uh, name of every tadpole in every river and still go to hell. Uh, but believer's baptism is what is taught in the Bible. And uh, you never find baptism taught for salvation, but you find it taught to be practiced after salvation. And so uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting. But some people get it all mixed up, and I'm aware of that. If you read the Bible and stay in the context of the Bible, it becomes very easy to understand. And it's uh, very interesting. I, as I learned that Jesus baptized people, and he did. Uh, you, you hear almost nothing about that. But right here we read that he did that, right here in John chapter 3. And uh, I mean, I would have counted an honor to have been baptized by Jesus Christ. Like I said, I, they're no more saved than you and I who are baptized by his uh, marvelous hands. Uh, but we who have not seen him and yet believe, uh, the Lord said, we are blessed because we have seen, because we have believed whom we have not seen. Well, so it is. Uh, but now let's read on now. Verse 31, He that cometh from above is above all. This is a de declarative statement about Jesus Christ you're reading these next few verses right here. And if you look at these, you can see the great uh, detail of his deity spelled out in these verses right here. He that cometh from above is above all. So that's Jesus Christ. He came from above. He didn't come from this earth. Uh, he that is of the earth is earthly. And that would, that would not apply to the Lord because he came from above. And speaketh of the earth. And he that come from above is above all. He definitely spoke of heavenly things because he came <coughs> from above and had the ability to speak. He had seen the above. He, had, he, was, he was God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself uh, a little lower uh, so that he could take upon the robe of man and die for our sins. But he certainly, uh, let's read on here in verse 32. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testified, and no man received his testimony. Remember, as Jesus Christ spoke, he spoke what he had seen, what he heard. He spoke of the Father. He spoke of the Father's will. <coughs> he spoke of heaven. He, he spoke of great things. Uh, he, because he had seen and heard. That's referring to Jesus Christ. Uh, no man, uh, uh, and no man received his testimony. Verse 33, he that receiveth his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Now, uh, just, just to sum these verses up right here. Uh, uh, we who believe, we, we hear his words. We accept his words. We believe his words. Uh, we know that he's seen the other side, and I'm glad to know one that has seen the other side. When we read his words, it's one who speaks about the other side, a life beyond this, which we trust in him shall see one day. Uh, and we're told right here in verse 34 <coughs> that God has not given the Spirit by measure unto him. In other words, there's no measure to the amount of the Spirit that was upon Jesus Christ. I mean, it was you couldn't measure it. Uh, we, we, we believers in this New Testament dispensation of time, we have a measure of the Spirit, a certain amount of the Spirit that comes upon us for the new birth. <clears throat> but with Jesus Christ, there was no measure in that Spirit. It was that great. For the Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things unto his hand. 
He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. May God bless us, and may God help us all.